Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on air and combustion and we are going to look at uh, preparation of oxygen and specifically in the lab. Previously we discussed on preparation of oxygen in large scale and we called it fractional distillation of liquefied air. So we looked at the constituents of air and how they are separated in different components in the, in the fractional distillator and we were able to identify how those components and the processes in which they were separated. So today we are going to focus on preparing oxygen in the lab and we are going to identify different methods. For today we are going to discuss one of the method. So oxygen are uh, is actually co covers around like 50 percent on the earth crust and ma majorly it is usually exists uh, in combined states uh, in metals and we also know that about 70 percent of the water in the earth is made up of hydrogen and oxygen and we say that uh, water covers most of the percentage of the earth crust and in the atmospheric gases we know that the percentage of oxygen is about 21 and to be exact is around 21 percent and so we know that oxygen exists uh, but in different combined states so how can we be able to prepare this oxygen in the laboratory so one of the method of preparing oxygen is in the lab is by using hydrogen peroxide so this is the setup you can see uh, we have a uh, half uh, filled trough or basin is placed um, in a, with a beehive. You can see there's a beehive at the bottom where we uh, put a measuring cylinder. Remember this um, uh, basin is filled with water and then it is also connected to a um, round bottomed flask. You can see the round bottomed flask contains the manganese 4 oxide. We are going to discuss the purpose of this manganese 4 oxide and in the dropping funnel we have hydrogen peroxide and it is exist in liquid state and the tap is opened and this hydrogen peroxide trickles down into the round bottomed flask where there is manganese 4 oxide so this reaction occurs when the tap uh, is opened it starts on its own so we are going to look at some of the observations you are going to see from this experiment First of all, you're going to see some bubbling occurring in the round bottomed flask. You see some bubbles and these bubbles or effervescence will tell you that there is a gas that is being produced. And in this case, we are producing gas and this gas is oxygen gas. So what you notice is we have manganese 4 oxide in our round bottomed flask. The purpose of this manganese 4 oxide is actually it acts as a catalyst. Uh, this catalyst speeds up the reaction. What reaction are we talking about? Hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form water and oxygen gas. So this process of decomposition can happen on its own, but it is not as fast. So what we do, we add a catalyst that speeds up that decomposition and that catalyst that we add is manganese 4 oxide. So this is the equation for the reaction. So hydrogen peroxide reacts uh, by decomposing to form water and oxygen. So when you're writing the equation, make sure you include the catalyst, which is manganese 4 oxide, on top on, of your arrow. So we have the hydrogen peroxide decomposing to water and oxygen. And this is a faster process because of the catalyst. Later on in Form 2, we are going to look at writing equations and balancing them, which is our second chemical equation. So some of the physical properties of oxygen or that is collected uh, by this method, you can see the method of collection. We refer to it as over water. We are going to see why it's collected in this method. One of the physical properties is that oxygen is colorless. You cannot see it. It's, it's colorless. And then it's also odorless. You cannot smell oxygen. You can't see it and you can't smell it. 
and it has a very low uh, boiling point of around 183, negative 183 degrees Celsius. Remember, we mentioned this when we are extracting oxygen by fractional distillation of air, and then it's insoluble in water, almost, so we say it is slightly soluble. So it is slightly soluble in water, that's why it is collected by overwater method. So this method of collection is referred to as overwater method. So that is the reason why there is some combined oxygen, especially you know that living organisms like the fish live in water and they are able to breathe in that oxygen that is dissolved in water. So it can't be completely insoluble, it's actually slightly soluble or almost insoluble. So that is the reason why we collect it by this method. If we wanted to collect a uh, dry oxygen gas using this method, we would have to pass the oxygen by a uh, concentrated sulfuric acid or anhydrous calcium chloride. So the concentrated sulfuric acid is placed in a conical flask and then the anhydrous calcium chloride is placed in a U-tube. But in this case, we cannot collect oxygen either by upward or downward delivery, but we use a syringe. So we collect oxygen using a syringe, which is dry. So do not use upward or downward delivery. Remember, oxygen is not heavy, nor is it lighter than air. It's actually almost closer to the density of air. So that's why we cannot use this uh, tool methods but using a syringe enables us to be able to collect the gas and it is already dry. So let's look at one of the questions uh, so that we can be able to see if we have understood what we have discussed. So let's look at this diagram. We can see we have hydrogen peroxide on the dropping panel and we have manganese four oxide in the round bottomed flask with, with a stand. And then this gas is passed through concentrated sulfuric acid and it is collected by overwater method. So let's look at the question. Uh, what is observed when the hydrogen peroxide is added to the flask? So we are basically being asked the observation in the round bottomed flask. We said that you are going to see effervescence and this effervescence tells you there is a gas that is being formed. Then let's look at question two. Describe the color and the smell of the gas. This gas that is being produced is oxygen. This question is asking for the physical properties of oxygen, we said that oxygen does not have a color, it's colorless, and the smell is odorless. And then let's look at question C. Name the method of gas collection used. If you look at the gas jar, it has been inverted in a water bath, so we call this overwater method. So this is overwater method. And, and another question is what property of oxygen makes it possible to be collected using the method above? So it is possible for us to collect oxygen in this method because oxygen is slightly soluble in water. Then let's look at the next question. What is the purpose of manganese oxide? We said that this manganese oxide is used as a catalyst to speed up the reaction. Then let's look at question D. Write the equation for the reaction. So hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form oxygen water. Right, let's write the equation. And finally, uh, lowering a glowing splint slowly into the gas jar containing oxygen state what is observed. So this question is asking for test of oxygen. So oxygen is tested by introducing a glowing splint into that gas jar. The glowing splint is going to relight or to rekindle. So when you're explaining your explanation, make sure you're able to explain what you do in the lab. So you lower a glowing splint into the gas jar, it's going to relight or rekindle. This test uh, tells us that what we are collecting is actually oxygen gas. 
Next is what is the purpose of concentrated sulfuric acid? We can see some sulfuric acid uh, when we were discussing the diagram. So the concentrated sulfuric acid is to dry oxygen gas. But you can see that the way the oxygen gas is being collected is like we are repeating the process once more. Although the purpose of the concentrated sulfuric acid is to dry the oxygen gas. And that brings us to the end of the question. I hope you have been able to understand. See you in the next session.